Hey Trap, what day is it? Friday day? Does it still count as top five Friday guys if it's filmed on a Friday and launched on a Saturday? I don't know, you be the judge. Anyway, on today's top five Friday we're going to be talking about the top five elite blasters. And the elite line has been around for a long time. Since 2012 actually. That's half a decade. So what makes the Elite line so special? Well, the defining factor of the Elite line and what's made it such a phenomenal success commercially and in our community is that everything was interchangeable. In fact, it was modular pre-modulus. Gee, I wonder if that's why they call it the Modulus line. Anyway, so what the Elite line did really well is it took all of our reverse plunger blasters, those were plungers that went over the bolt action, and it turned them into direct plunger blasters, which was a way more efficient air delivery system for the actual sprayer style blasters. Now, this is pre-electronic blasters even being that great. We still had electronic blasters, but they were things like the Stampede, and they were springers too. They were like electronic springers. Anyway, so making all of the reverse plunger blasters direct plunger dramatically improved their performance, removed the need for a lot of things like AR removals and better springs to get those regular ranges, and made pretty much out of the box blasters ready for HVZ and other styles of super stock play. That's awesome. So it really took the hobby from like a 5 to an 11, which was pretty sweet in and of itself. But not all can be winners in Elite Land. Some were flops and some were phenomenal successes. So I'm taking this list and I'm putting it together as definitely my top five Elite Blasters, the ones that I enjoy the most, the ones that are unique or special in some way. Let's go! So, both of my honorable mentions are actually still in the package and they are the Stockade and the cross pole. I'll start with the stockade. The stockade is an honorable mention because it was an electronic flywheel style blaster that was firing elite darts before anything else. Yes, it predates the strife. The only thing that came before the stockade that was a really modern flywheel style blaster was the barricade. And we were clip modding barricades before any of this stuff came out. So the stockade is really cool because it came with an awesome stock hence the name, and it was a fairly priced flywheel blaster that allowed you to continuously reload it and top it off. It was very, very good for HVZ. People were dual wielding these long before they were dual wielding stripes, and I'm keeping mine new in package because I really liked it when it came out. I liked clip modding them, and I liked them stock. When it became an elite blaster, the flywheel tech got a little bit better and a little bit closer because it no longer had to crush whistler darts. Notably absent, however, is the presence of a rev trigger, which means that this just wasn't as efficient as a sidearm or a primary. So ultimately, the strife completely blew this out of the water, and that's why there aren't any stockades anymore. Our second honorable mention is the cross bolt, and this gets no love, guys, no love at all. But I really like that they introduced a new style of firing with the cross bolt, or at least made it potentially usable. And that is because it is a clip fed crossbow style blaster that uses elastic power. We call these stringers. So you have springers, which use springers flywheels which use electronic blaster power and we have stringers now and I like just the introduction of a third thing we still haven't had a particularly good one a lot of people think that there are plenty of hang-ups with the system sometimes the elastic will slip over the dart or under the dart resulting in a fail to fire now I still like the cross bolt. I like that it's very tight and compact and it's just a fun bullpup style blaster plus I'm a big fan of crossbows as you guys know so, one of the primary elite blasters was the Nerf Instrike Retaliator. This is the Sonic Ice version, which I chose specifically so that you could see... Why? <laughs> I chose this version specifically so that you could see that the plunger does not move. The plunger rod in the back does move, but the plunger casing does not. That's because this is a direct plunger blaster, and the translucent blue means that you can actually tell that on camera, which is cool. Now that this has been primed, this is of course a fully decked out Orange Modworks version of the Retaliator. So, the reason that people like the Retaliator so much is that it is the most compact version of this platform. Similar to the reason that people love the Stripes, there's a litany of body kits for this thing. You can turn it into a SIG MCX. You can outfit it completely with Orange Modworks sealed breeches. This kit came under fire when it originally came out, but I really dig the aesthetics of it. Anyway, the Retaliator is the smallest Springer style Elite Blaster, which means it gives you all of that power in a compact package. You can throw any stock on it, most rail attachments. You can completely replace the front end with a pump action grip if you want it to be more Rampage-esque. 
I actually prefer the Rampage, but I know that the Retaliator is beloved. It's also a very high selling blaster and an exact elite clone of the Recon before it, which was again very popular. They were built as 4-in-1 blasters because of all the accessories that came with it. So similar to the AR-15, the Retaliator is like the Barbie doll blaster of Nerf World, and that's why it's so popular. Not my personal favorite, but it belonged on the list, right guys? Alright guys, so number four on the list is the Raven Stinger. I really like the Raven Stinger. I actually prefer the Raven to the Strife. The Strife is not going to be on this list. Suck it, fanboys. The Raven Stinger is my favorite of the Elite Flywheel Blasters by far, personally. And that's because it's an Elite Blaster, for sure, but it's a Raven, which means that it's one of the most efficient bull pups ever made. That means that you can reload from right there, and it's really compact. It's only a little bit bigger than the Strife, but it comes with a carry handle, and it loads from the rear. I just prefer the ergonomics of bullpup blasters. It's completely a personal preference thing. A lot of people hate the Raven's trigger, but I prefer it, and I modify it with double springs. The Lazarus, of course, features the prototype of the Dr. Snickers cage from Germany, so this one in particular is very near and dear to my heart, but the Raven Stinger is a great looking blaster. It harkens back to that old school in strike yellow color scheme with a little bit of almost gear up flare with the uh, black detailing for the stinger. So it's a personal favorite color scheme of mine because it's really the only elite blaster that has this sort of paint job to it. So even though the original Raven came out I believe in 2013, the stinger coming out in 2015 was roughly the same price and really really cool in my opinion. It also wasn't that much more expensive, although it was much rarer, only coming out at Costco, I think. But uh, that is the Raven Stinger, and it is definitely our number four. If you don't like Ravens, I guess in your mind, you can pretend that I'm talking about the Strife right now. But they're both uh, single-stage flywheel blasters that shoot in semi-auto. I just prefer loading from the rear. Number three, we have the Nerf Demolisher. I know I said that there wouldn't be any stripes on this list, and the Demolisher is not a stripe. Now, you can cut off the missile attachment, but even though multiple people have requested that I do that in the past, the Draculina and I both really like the missile attachment because that's what makes the Demolisher special. Without the missile attachment, it really just is a strife. But uh, a lot of people say they like the handle and trigger pull much more. Some people really like the stock. Some people like that it's flat top as opposed to the rapid strike. I've seen people tuck full auto mechanisms into them. The Demolisher is a really cool platform. It's got a lot more front end and a more aggressive styling to the front end. Me personally, I think that it's cool that the Demolisher is far more symmetrical than the Strife. The Strife has a lot more going on. The Demolisher only has one rail on this side and the batteries on this side, but it's an inherently thicker blaster, so it can kind of get away with that. I like the Demolisher. It's the Draculina's HBZ blaster of choice because that missile launch is awesome for Special Infected. So it has LARP rules that the Strife can't compete with, and it's just a really efficient flywheel blaster. So it's, again, a lot of these Elite Blasters all follow the it's a Strife reskin rule, which is like, if it's a Strife, it could be a Raven or a Demolisher or any number of new Alien Menace slash uh, what have you blasters. There are a lot of things that use a single stage flywheel and no matter how they load, either via clips or revolver style turrets, it just, they all do the same thing. They all break elite ranges with flywheel performance, which means that they have rev up and rev down time. So they're all very similar and the Demolisher makes my list because it does something else, which is it has this hamp style missile launcher, which a lot of game types can take advantage of. I think that that's really neat and I like the size and ergonomics of it much more than a Strife. That's again a personal opinion and if you really, really, really love the Strife, then I guess you could do what I've seen some crazy people do, which is you can cut off the hamp and attach it to a Strife. That's never made sense to me. Who saw this coming? The Elite Alpha Trooper is on the list. So. The original EAT came out I think in 2013 and then in 2015 we got the OJ version from Kohl's. That's pretty sweet but they both cost 20 United States dollars if you bought them right. The EAT always cost 20 United States dollars and Kohl's has maybe a quarterly sale for theirs. It comes with a Spectre stock that you don't want and I think an extra six round magazine that you don't want either. But the 12 round Elite Alpha Trooper <laughs> that came in its original Elite form was an awesome platform. Especially for HVZ players who already really loved the Alpha Trooper, it was essentially 
all the mods that we wanted to do to a retaliator when it came out but now didn't have to. There was in fact a period of time where the choices were you could use a Rampage which was an Elite Blaster or you could use a modified uh, Alpha Trooper, the old Instrike yellow version, and I still chose the Instrike yellow version just because I liked this ergonomics of platform more. I don't even run these with a stock half the time. It wasn't until we started getting incredibly uh, super high quality 3D printed aftermarket stocks that I finally decided that that was something worth pursuing. But for the longest time, this on a bandolier was my HVZ primary go-to, and that's because it's an incredibly reliable platform and I could talk about it all day, but I feel like I have in other top fives. The Elite Alpha Trooper was incredibly affordable, easy to modify with Orange Mod Works kits, and didn't really need a whole lot of love. You had to find one where you could really get the timing down, but it would reward you indefinitely if you could master kind of the, uh, the timing pattern of both slam fire and regular fire with it. It's a really great blaster, and it, again, like, it's just, the same price as a Retaliator, and instead of getting all the garbage attachments that most people don't use anyway, you got this built-on attachment that was a Slamfire Mech Prime that lets you not have to move your hands unless you were reloading. So, a really great Springer platform, really kind of defined uh, the run-and-gun style Scout HVZ class that I've been playing forever, and so it's one of my personal favorites, and that makes it number two. But if this is number two and the Strife isn't on the list, what could possibly be number one? Bet you didn't see this coming. This is, of course, the Nerf Elite Hyperfire, and it's pretty new. We saw this for the first time, not this year, but last year at Toy Fair. And then it came out very shortly after, but the Hyperfire is actually a really great blaster. Now, in the modification community, it takes a ton of flack because people don't like its conveyor belt pusher as opposed to the mechanical pusher of the Rapid Strike. And you're right, the Rapid Strike is a much better blaster when modified. The key word there is when modified for the people in the back. The truth is that most people don't modify their blasters, so this is a fully classed primary style blaster, comes with 25 rounds of capacity in a modern drum that feeds very smoothly because most of the old ones for the Raiders are at this point very, very poor torsion springs and don't do a great job. So it feeds reliably, it actually shoots very fast, and it's keeps up with any other rate of fire on the market. It shoots way faster than a Rapid Strike stock, and there are solutions to make it shoot faster than a Rapid Strike modded, such as strapping two of them into one monstrosity. Enter the Storm Bolter. So, the Hyperfire is again cheap. It's on the shelf. You can still buy it and modify it. It's actually much easier to modify than the Rapid Strike because a proper Rapid Strike requires a three switch setup and the Hyperfire only asks two of you. So it's really, really simple and intuitive. You basically gut all of the stock stuff and put in new stuff that's rated for higher amperage. So it actually modifies pretty well. It delivers some pretty... pretty ridiculous results. This is... Uh, ferocious blaster on the battlefield. However, it is not a whole lot of fun to reload afterwards. Now, I really like the Hyperfire for that. I also like, again, that it has a very flat shell, which means that it hydros very nicely, and it has a lot of other great features going for it. Plenty of battery space because it did have C batteries originally, and the balance on a stock one that doesn't have two putty welded together is actually quite nice. I really like these areas where you have thumb and finger covers for everything in your trigger well. The controls are pretty intuitive, they're really easy to reach even if you have small hands, and the Hyperfire doesn't break the bank. There have been multiple sales where you can pick this up for 30 United States dollars, which means compared to the flywheel blasters that everybody knows and loves and is having a hard time getting their hands on, this is a remarkably affordable alternative that is really nice stock. You can bring this to pretty much any super stock war and perform just fine with it, and that's really what it's all about. We in the modification community like to get really, really hung up on what we can do, and we forget that most people don't ever open their blasters. Most people just want something that works out of the box and is a lot of fun. While this is one of the virtues of the Elite Alpha Trooper, it's also a virtue of the Hyperfire because it's finally the, the light machine gun that everybody wanted a, a Nerf blaster to be. It shoots way faster than the Stampede and the Rapid Strike stock, and it gets better performance than either of them, really. It's pretty sweet, and that's why it's number one on our list. 
Alrighty guys, so that's your top five Friday. It's got Easter eggs. I wonder if anybody will find them. It's got pretty decent points, and it's got the opportunity for you to pick the next top five topic. Now, it wouldn't be complete if we didn't at least try and get you to smash that like button. Smash it like the hyper fire that everybody keeps breaking and complaining about. Anyway, uh, I do have a proposal for you, so I'm going to give you a discount in honor of Mother's Day. You can have half the likes for an even better prize than ever before. If you guys can get this video to 5,000 likes for me, I will make the Draculina do the next Top 5 Friday. And we all win. That's going to be hilarious and great. Thank you guys very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this top five. I've covered most of the lines that have enough blasters to cover at this point, so I definitely need your suggestions down below as to what you would like that top five to be. And again, remember to like this video so that the Draculina has to handle that top five. I've gotten pretty good at rattling these off, but it'll be really hilarious to see what story she comes up with. Much love. Nerf on. Drac out. Uh, uh.